Welcome to Highline Excel class number 10. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook right here. Hey, if you're enrolled in the class, just go to our week two website. Hey, we want to talk about percentage increase and then do a cool big project up here. Percentage increase, you have $25 and you want to increase by 10%. So you'd take the 25 and then you'd add to it $25 plus 10%. So let's do that. Equals 25 plus 25 times the 10%. This right here, if I hit the highlight that and hit the F9 key, which is evaluate, that's just the part that is increasing, the amount of the increase. And then we'd add that uh, to the 25 and get 2750. I'm going to control Z. And then tab, 2750. Another way to do that, instead of percent, since really that is just formatting. This is the actual number. You don't have to format it. You can just leave it a 0.1. So this would be equals 25 plus 25 times the 0.1. And that will give us 2750. Another way to do this is if you were to factor these 25s out, you'd be left with a 1 here and a 0.1 here. So you could simply say 1 plus whatever your percentage increase is, or decrease for that matter, times the original amount would give us the uh, amount plus the increase. Equals 25 times, in parentheses, 1 plus our rate of increase. Control Enter. This is actually, if you're doing uh, basic business math, base uh, part rate, this would be the base, and this is the end part. Or this is the beginning amount, and this is the end uh, amount. All right, let's do it one more way. You don't need to have it formatted. You could simply say equals to 25 times, in parentheses, 1 plus the whatever the decimal is. Remember, that's not formatted. And it gives us the same thing. That Those are four different uh, ideas, all yielding the same result. All right, now let's go and see if we can uh, analyze some data and make some projections. Now, here's our whole table. We need to summarize all of our sales for these products from this sheet right here, then which we already did in a previous video. Then we need to look up our estimates for rate of increase. Because here are our years, 2010, and we want to project for each subsequent year what our sales will be for each product. Now, where are all these increases, these percentage increases? Right here. There's our table, and it's on an assumption sheet. Two reasons you have assumption sheets. One is sometimes you don't want to uh, use the real estate on your uh, projected uh, increase sheet. The other reason is sometimes it's nice to keep all of the changing data on one sheet. Then it's easy to find it for the whole workbook, and you come here and change it. All right, uh, let's go over to this increase sheet, and let's quickly do our sum if equals sum if. We just did this in the last video. Our range with criteria. Oh, it's going to be products, so I'm going to go over to raw data. Where are our products? Right here. Click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock it, comma. Oh, I'm stuck with this again. I got to come all the way back over here. Notice it put the name of the sheet in. I'm going to go ahead and click on this criteria right there, except for I'm going to highlight that and delete it. It's OK if you leave it in, but it certainly does make the formula more difficult to look at. So it's looking through that whole range of products, and there's the criteria. Only find the Carlota ones, comma. And then finally, we need our sum range. So I go back over to my raw data. Ooh, Actually, we could click here, Control, Shift, Up Arrow. And then that's too much, so I hold Shift and Down Arrow. However you do it, you want to highlight from J4 to J203. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Watch what happens. Boop. Close parentheses. and Control Enter. I'm going to double click and send that down. Now let's do our VLOOKUP because we need to get our rate of increase, our assumptions for these uh, projected sales for the future. This whole table right here. Why don't we um, go ahead and notice a couple things? The product names, 
our word, so we're going to use an exact match for VLOOKUP. They're in the first column. 11 is in the second. 12 is in the third column. This is the fourth column. This is the fifth column. Now, we're going to use, as we just saw in our VLOOKUP video a couple minutes ago, we're going to use VLOOKUP and the columns function together to retrieve all this data. Now, I'm going to name this table. Column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm just going to name it. Come up here and call this uh, rate increase data. And enter. you got to hit enter. I hope I spelled it all right. It doesn't matter. The formula won't care if it's spelled wrong. Uh, but anyway, let's go back over here. And let's start our formula. Equals V lookup. And the lookup value, oh, that's the product name. Remember, it's going over to that table on that other sheet and looking in the first column. It's going to find the Carlota in which wherever it is. Comma, the whole table that we're looking things up in. Oh, I'm going to hit F3 because the name of that table is rate increase data. Now, the table array, I'm going to uh, look at the screen tip, and I have to remember that there's a comma, and then it wants column index. Now, we, shot, we saw this two videos ago. Instead of typing a 2 here for this column, a 3 here, a 4 here, a 5 here, we're going to use our columns trick. Columns. And now, this is a way of incrementing numbers inside of formulas. So D3. So I'm going to type dollar sign D3 colon D3. This one will be locked. This one won't be locked. So as it moves forward, it'll count 1, 2, 3, 4. Close parentheses. But remember, we need 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to add 1. That's the column index. Comma, and the since we're looking up words, remember we're looking up Carlota, Yanaki, Aspen, those are products. We're going to put false or 0. Close parentheses. Now, wait a second. That's not going to work because that cell reference right there, notice Carlota. We need to use it in this column, this column, this column, all the way across. So I'm going to click my cursor somewhere by B3 and hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Oh, yeah, dollar signs in front of the column, but not in front of the row because when you copy it down, it needs to move to Yanaki and then Aspen. Control Enter. I'm going to double click and send it down, and then click and drag it over. Click in the last cell and hit F2. Looks like I uh, got, OK, so I got that right, and it's still looking at that uh, right there. Oh, and it's still got that one. Notice D to G. If I count on my fingers, ABC, D, E, F, G. That's 4 plus 1 is 5. If you don't believe it, you can highlight this here and hit that little F9 key to prove it to yourself. Oh, there's a 5. Control Z. Actually, you can just click Escape. Finally, we have all the data we want. There's the sales. In each subsequent year, it's going to increase by uh, a certain amount, whatever that percentage is. Now, we're going to have to actually do this column first, and then we'll worry about all of these. For this one, it's pretty simple. Equals the sales from the previous year for that product, and that's a relative cell reference times in parentheses 1 plus. Remember, this is a percentage increase where we want the actual increase amount and the original amount to say the total amount for the next uh, year. Now, I need to close parentheses, Control Enter. That's just putting the formula in the cell, keeping it highlighted, because I'm immediately going to do something to the cell. Double click and send it down. I'm going to click on the last one and hit F2. Oh, OK, they got it right. Now, the next formula that we do will work for all of these cells, because each year is subsequently going to look to the year before. So I'm going to click here. I'm actually going to highlight the whole range here. This whole range right here. And there's the active cell. We know uh, that we can highlight cells in advance. And if we put a formula here, and whatever we put there, whether it's a word or a formula, whatever we put in the active cell, if we hit then hit Control Enter, it will populate all the cells. Because the same formula is going into all the cells, we can do it this way. Equals, oh yeah, whatever the sales are, one cell to my left. That way, when we get to 14, we're not still looking here because we have it locked. It's going to be looking to 13 times. 
And this is the 12 percentage rate. And notice there's a whole table the same size as this. So that is a relative cell reference also. Oh, oh but, but that's not going to work. That would just give us the amount. Remember, we need, in parentheses, 1 plus. Now, as Control Z, if you like doing it, if it makes more sense for you to do it this way, plus, and then you go get this amount again times the percentage increase, that's fine too. But if you go on to study uh, more business, this certainly is the more common way, especially in finance and stuff like that, to do 1 plus the whatever the increase or decrease rate is. I'm going to Control Enter. I'm going to click in the last cell here and hit F2. See if I got it. Oh, I got the rate right, right? Because that rate is for the Bellin boomerang model. And it's for 14, 2014. Oh, yeah, that's right there. And that one's right, too, because remember, we need the sales from the year before. All right, uh, so that's uh, week two. Um, we have some, some more stuff in week two, but this is, uh, I think, chapter the first chapter in the first textbook we're using. All right, we'll see you next video.